Latham took five for one in a spell or something. And I was one of the five and played a terrible shot. Uh, well, what do you do? Uh, I still haven't forgiven myself, never will. Uh, I should have won the game for Australia, but I didn't. Again, you know, we knew that it's, it's a small total, but it's more the, the build-up, you know, why England got to 150 ahead. That was the, the frustrating thing, and it sort of adds to your frustration in that we had England in, in strife again. They were probably, again, six or seven for, and all the batsmen were out, including both of them. Um, and the scores were tied, so we'd batted once, and they were in their second innings, we'd both batted, and they are in the second innings, seven wickets down, and only around about our score. So basically seven for none in their second innings. And they scraped and scrounged out another 150. Then we have to go and chase 150 to, to win the test. So there was a, that real sense of frustration that we'd let the game slip again. So yes, leading into our second innings batting, um, we knew it was going to be, be hard work. Having won the previous game at Leeds with fewer runs to play with, then the message is always the same. Okay, remember what we did last game, we've got a few more runs to play with this time, we can do it again. But there would have been that feeling, I'm sure, that the pitch was a better pitch in Birmingham. Um, so again, everything has to be right. We were cruising along um, reasonably well. I, I can remember batting myself with uh, Graham Yallop, and uh, so we we're only I think three for you know, pretty close to 100. The runs are not flowing. You know, it's a real, you know, real grind to you know get to this target. But all of a sudden, we started to get to you know that sort of you know those little targets that you set yourselves. Okay, we've got to 100. We've got wickets in, in hand, so only another 50 to go. And all they had to do was just bat properly for another hour. And that was the game won, you know, and they're back in control of the series. And yet, when you've got both of them around in that sort of mood, and you've got Brearley saying, just tug in those strings. Um, I never know what Brearley said to both of them, but whatever it was, it certainly worked. As I say, Beefy, when he's in that sort of mood, just senses that, you know, there's a chance to, to do something special. Yeah, I guess all good players are like that. They get their tail up, they, they can smell the blood, and... Uh... They seem to perform better, but I never really thought both of them was a great bowler, you know. And I suppose, uh, silly me for uh, not thinking he was that good. It was Alan Border got out to uh, John Embry, I think it was, turned and bounced from nowhere and gloved it, and I think it might have been Gat, who's usually at short leg, took the catch. And that's well bowled. Out of a bit of rough stuff there. Border is gone for 40. And then Mike Brady uh, suggested I bowl before that, and I said, when you took the wicket, I said, right, I'll have a go now. I think this is the right time. Five wickets left, 37 needed to win, and Brearley's brought both them back to bowl at Marsh. Bowled him. 114 for six. He's out. LBW. First ball and, both and you can sense the pressure building because you see bats from thinking, once you see them thinking, how do I get a run here? Then you realise you've suddenly got control of the game again. Uh, and for Beefy this time, you know, forget the bats, you know, he just picked up wickets and he, it, he just looked, he looked unplayable. But the ball, we got it reversed and we, we didn't uh, realise what we were doing. It just suddenly you think, well, why is it doing that? And the reverse, the science of reverse swing came um, a little bit later. Both are going to count. And there's bowled in. And that surely is going to be it. A joyous, triumphant both of them. Palms are aloft again, 121 for nine. You only really think you've got a chance of winning when the final important events take place. So when both of them start taking wickets, then you suddenly think, well, actually, we've still, got, you know, we've still got half a chance here. What people have to remember, and I think if you ask the Australian players, the thing that they'll tell you was the crowd, the atmosphere. It was chocker, and it's, called, it's not called the bull ring for no reason. And they were right behind England. The noise was deafening. As soon as I started to run in the bowl, 
It just it went to a crescendo. It was amazing, absolutely amazing atmosphere. And I think, the, in fairness, the crowd probably got three or four of those winners. That's it this time. He's made sure he's taken five wickets. He grabs a stump. And another memorable victory for England. It's history. He, you know, within a blink of the eye, you know, he'd taken five for none, five for one or something. We were, we were game over. England are running off the field celebrating. And, and another game has, um, you know, slipped us by. Just, uh, you know, real gut-wrenching stuff um, to be seeing in a dressing room under those circumstances. Yeah, it, it was strange, the pitch, actually, because it didn't look bad and it didn't play badly. Um, and yet, for some reason, everyone kept getting out. Um, you know, on both teams. No one, no one made a big score either, either way, I don't think. It's one of the most amazing things. You know, Birmingham is notoriously a good batting pitch. And for no one to make a, a 50 in that test match, bowlers must have bowled very well. You know, it's a quiet dressing room. You, no one knows quite what to say. Um, you know, you might have post-mortems later on, but at that time, you know, we just, we just knew that uh, we'd let another game pass us by. I mean, sure, they, they could bowl, uh, uh, but, you know, you shouldn't get bowled out uh, for that sort of... It was bad batting. You know, the batting just the game let us down. Uh, so that was... So as a batsman, you sort of take it a bit personally that, you know, you, you know, as a group, we couldn't get 150. You know, it's just not good enough. And there's not much you can do about it now, unfortunately. It was a long time ago, but uh, I, I still, as I said, I hate talking about it because it's painful. He had confidence and bravado and uh, he backed himself. And look, he, he, was a, he was a superb player. We, we respected him very highly. But in saying that, he was one of those bowlers that attacked you and you felt you could attack him back. Uh, I hit the stumps a few times, so something was right. It, it, it was just, it was, it was a terrific series to play, if you're English. I mean, every time you go to England, you hear enough about it, and I go to England quite a bit, so, you know, that's why uh, sitting in a dressing room in Australia, I don't like talking about it. My choice, because it really finished the match, both of them. If you look back through Ashes series, you've got your own personal moments, and if you're a witness to things such as Headingley, Old Trafford in that same series, Birmingham, where both of them is doing extraordinary things, where Willis is doing extraordinary things, you are going to treasure those memories for a long, long time, because they are eternally special.